Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another Go video. In today's episode, I'm sharing with you what is new in Go 1.22. Go 1.22 was released on February 6, 2024. There are packages already available, official ones, for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Let's talk about the changes that I think are important to call out. As usual, the link to the code for all of these examples is in the description of this video, so feel free to check that out. The first one, new feature, is the one applicable to 4 that fixes a gotcha that typically happens if you're not familiar with how Go routines and the for loop works. So if you're trying to do something like this, you will imagine that what is going to be printing is A, B, C. But what is happening is that this variable that we are referring to in the Go routine is actually going to be pointing to the last value. So it's going to be all we see. What is going to happen now in Go 1.22 is that that is fixed behind the scenes. So you don't have to explicitly do something like when you need it, sort of like defining a new variable that points to the value that you are using in the for range. So if you go and print out that uh, by compiling the binary, you will notice now it's working as expected. One important thing to call out here is this top closure uh, warning that is coming out from Go, please. This is going to be resolved in the next version, 1.5.0. Please just ignore it for now. It will be fixed by the Go team. Let's go to the next new feature. Next feature is also related to the for statement and this adds a way to iterate through integer. So the way it works is just literally pass in the integer that you want to use as a range, and then it will loop through the values. This is sort of like we're doing a range of a slice. So if you go and compile this, we can see that it's going to be going from zero to four is not inclusive of the number that you're using. It's an interesting and you know quite neat new feature. Let's go to the next one. This new feature is the inclusion of the first v2 package, which is an update of the math rand package. It fixes a few things that were in the previous implementation. It makes it more idiomatic and it actually improves its performance. Let me show you a few changes. Typically, it will be sort of like kind of backwards compatible to the code that you currently have. The way it works is that actually it uses a bit of generics and a few of the new functions. Uh, like I was saying in the beginning is that some of the method names or function names are much more idiomatic. So for example, in the V1 version, it was in 31. Now in the V2 version will be in 32. In the end, it's sort of more or less the same thing. What is nice and interesting is that now run.n, that's a new function that receives generic of any numeric value, it will give you any random number that you pass in as an argument. So if we go and compile this, you will see what I mean. So in this case, you will see that it's now it's running 1.8 seconds. If we run it again, it will give you another value between the input argument that I mentioned. And again, obviously it's running the random uh, values in the slice as well. So again, it's a nice improvement. It will be nice for us to upgrade. And what they have mentioned in the change log is that it's going to be a new tool for eventually migrate your existing code that you have in RAND in the V1 version to the V2 one. So let's see in the near future. Let's go to the fourth new feature. The next feature includes a change in the server mox type in net HTTP. Let me show you. So this is a nice and interesting way to do things now because probably you won't need any other routers that were available before, like Gorilla Mox or Chai or those kind of things. What this adds is this uh, way to define routes that you can specify the method as well as the path with some variables or arguments that you can pass in in the route. One thing that is interesting is that you can also, you can pull those values from the path value like you will expect, but also it allows you to verify if you have routes that happen to be conflicting with each other, they will panic immediately. And one of the cool things is that you are explicitly setting the method in advance, like the one I'm defining here, will we forget and, and the one below is also forget, but you can specify for post, patch, and all the other methods. Let's compile this and I'll show you how it works. So right now, if I run main, if you go back to the code, you will see that I have a get and ID value. So if I do, a, let me exit this and do a curl, ID value, let me change to get. And my ID is ID, if I change it to, I don't know, 100, you will see that ID is 100. Now, obviously, if I use a method that is not defined, it will give me a 404. Or more importantly, if I try to do what I told you before about defining a route that happens to be a similar path, it will immediately panic. So if we go and compile this one more time and we run it, you will see that now 
Well, it's compiling because the values that I have here for, for path get val1 and val2 kind of conflicts with the one that I have for ID and value. So this is really cool. It's most likely eventually, you know, people will start. I guess it depends on the project. If your project is, is already so dependent on something like Gorilla Mox or Chai, well, it's going to be a little bit complicated to migrate to this new implementation of server mocks. Ah, but I guess for future projects, it does make a lot of sense. Let's talk about the next feature. The next feature includes embedding files in some of the file-like methods in NetHttp. For example, let me show you. We have this code right here that it does is embedding using an API that was added a few versions ago to embed the files directory. So if I go and open the files directory, you will see that I have a bunch of txt files, nothing really complicated. So what is going to happen is when building the binary, we can actually serve those files from the binary itself. So let's build this example. If I go back and do a curl, get localhost, you will notice that I have a files file. If I do a files, you will see that I now have the three files that I listed before. I have one txt, I will get the value. If I do a two, I will get the value. One important thing is that because obviously it's embedded into the binary, if I go and modify one of the files and I do another curl for that specific file, it won't refer to the modified value, but are to always the one that is embedded in the binary. So this is a cool thing to serve files. Maybe you want to serve your Swagger documentation directly from your binary itself. Now you can do it in a different way when embedding files directly. Let's jump into the last feature that I want to call out. The last feature will be a new function in the slices package that is called concat. And as you may imagine, it does what it says. It concatenates different slices. It's a generic function that you can use with any slice type. So in this case, it's going to be receiving these three slices and it's going to be printing out the value of those as a new slice. So if you go and compile this and we run it, you will see what I mean, which in this case, it's just concatenating three of them and returning a new value. So that's it. Those are the six new features that I wanted to call out for Go 1.22. Of course, there are more and I highly encourage you to read the documentation and the blog post. As usual, there is also a link in the description of this video that includes a link to my vlog that gives you a text version of this video. Thank you for watching. I will talk to you next time. Take care. Stay safe. See ya.